What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a really interesting video for you. If you'd like to go ahead and try out the new Minecraft 1.16 Snapshot 20W06A or any one of the future ones as well. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your own 1.16 Snapshot server and have some of your friends join it. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we need the actual game installed. So I'll head across to the Minecraft launcher, open it up, and at the very top, we'll go to installations, and then we'll make sure both releases and snapshots are checked. Then we'll hit new, give it a name, and then under where it says version, we'll hit the drop down, and we'll select the latest snapshot, 20W06A. Now, of course, this is just the game itself. You can go ahead and change the options for it down here as well. We're going to go create, and then you can hit play next to it to go ahead and download and install the latest snapshot. Now that we know that this is working, we can simply quit out of it and reopen the Minecraft launcher. Then we'll head back to installations, we'll select the latest snapshot, and we'll go ahead and hit the server button to the right of version to go ahead and download the actual server files. After doing that, it'll open our browser and ask us if we want to keep server.jar. So of course, we'll hit keep and it'll download. Then I'll make a folder on my desktop called 1.16 snapshot server. Of course, you can have this wherever you want, named whatever you want. Then I'm going to simply drag and drop server.jar into the folder that we just created. And I can close out of my browser and you can see it over here. So from this point, if you wanted to, you could close the Minecraft launcher and we'll be focusing on this folder over here. So first of all, we'll right click new text document and you should see this here, new text document.txt. Seeing the extension txt is important. So we'll head across to view and make sure that file name extensions is checked. Then we'll come back to it and we'll take out everything and replace it with run.bat. Of course, you can name this anything you want, just as long as it ends in .bat. We'll right-click, edit, and it'll open with Notepad. So from here, we'll start by entering a command that you can find in the description down below. Java XMX 2G XMS 1024M jar server.jar and no GUI. Just make sure that server.jar matches the same server.jar file over here, so the file name is the same. Of course, if it's named something other than server.jar, make sure to change it either here or rename the file to be server.jar. Once you've done that, there's a couple of things that we need to do here. XMS is the starting amount of RAM that the server has, which by default is one gigabyte. Then to give your server more RAM, we're gonna change XMX 2G to be something different. So of course, opening up Task Manager, heading across to the Performance tab, you can see exactly how much memory you have under memory. And of course, you'll only be able to use what is available and nothing more. So currently I have 46 gigabytes available, which a lot of you guys won't have. So I'll go ahead and give it say eight gigs. Of course, the more that you give the server, the better. Just make sure that you still have some left over to play and do other things on your PC. Once you're done with that, press enter and I'll type in pause as the final line. We'll save it and we'll close it. Then we'll run server.bat. Now, once it's run, you'll see this pop up over here. Fail to load properties from file, fail to load a EULA. You need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. So I'll press any key to continue and I'll open up the EULA.txt and where it says false, I'll change it to true. Save and close. Then we have server.properties over here where we can go ahead and edit information on our server. Of course, if you've ever set up a server before, you're used to this. Otherwise, if you don't know what this is, I'd recommend reading through each option so that you know what to do. When it comes to server ports, unless you're running more than one server on your current PC or network, then I'd recommend leaving this at 25565. But just remember what you have it set to here, because we'll need to port forward it later for people outside of our home connection to connect to the server. After you've changed everything to be what you want, we can go ahead and save it with Control S, close it, and double click run.bat once again. This time the server will actually start and will generate a bunch of new files. As you can see, default game type survival, server started on 25565 and we're generating the spawn area. So from this point, once it finishes loading, we'll be able to connect on our local PC and only our local PC. So I'll start up Minecraft, hit play next to latest snapshot. I'll go across to multiplayer, proceed, add a server, and I'll name it whatever and the server address will either be local host, one word, or it will be 127.0.0.1. This is to connect to your own PC. There we have it. We can hit the play button and we'll join the server. As you see on the left-hand side, you'll see us joining the server and we're in the server itself. So of course I can't run any commands. What I need to do first is head across to the actual server itself and I'll be typing in OP, CCNO, my own username, enter, and now I'm a server operator. So, 
As soon as I do that, I'm able to change my game mode, etc, etc. Now, of course, the server is pretty much set up to work. However, nobody else can join your server other than your own PC. How do we solve that? Well, first of all, we need to allow the server through our local firewall to allow people on our network to connect. And then if you want your friends to join from other networks in other places, then you'll need to go ahead and port forward. So I'll go ahead and cover that now. For now, I'll disconnect and I'll minimize Minecraft. Looking back at the CMD over here, all we need to do is type in save hyphen all. It'll save everything. Then we'll type in stop, hit enter. The server will save once again, and we can hit enter and it closes entirely. So of course, to start up your server again, we'll simply double click on run.batch. However, let's get into port forwarding and allowing it through your firewall. So simply hit start and type in firewall. Of course, if you're using an antivirus, you won't do this method. You'll do it there instead. But I'll go ahead and open up Windows Defender Firewall. As you can see, it says it's being managed by my antivirus. However, if you don't see that warning there, then great. Head across to Advanced Settings. You can close out of the window when a new one pops up. So from here, on the top left hand side, we'll head to Inbound Rules. New Rule. We'll select Port. Next. TCP specific local port 25565, which is the same one as our server port listed in the server.properties file. Next, allow the connection. Next, make sure everything is ticked. Next, and we'll give it a name. I'll call it Minecraft. Enter, and we're done with that. New rule once again, port. Next, UDP 25565. Next, allow, check the three. Next, name, and we're done. Then we'll head across to Outbound Rules, New Rule, Port, Next, TCP, 25565, Next, Allow the Connection, Next, 3 ticked, Next, and we'll name it Minecraft. New Rule once again, Port, Next, UDP, Paste in 25565, Allow the Connection, Next, All 3 checked, Next, Minecraft, Enter. Now we're done allowing it through our Windows firewall. Of course, if you have an antivirus managing it, then you'll need to go ahead and whitelist those ports there. Then the next part is port forwarding, and this is by far the trickiest part of the tutorial. If you've done it before, great. If you haven't, then you'll have to go ahead and research your router in order to learn how to do this. However, today I'm going to show you a very simple example with a sample router that I've created. Note that this isn't actually functional, this is just a demonstration. So what we need to do is simply where it says external port, we'll type in 25565, and if it's asking for a range, we'll enter it in both of these places. Internal port 25565 to 25565. Protocol, we'll change it to TCP and UDP. However, if you don't have this option, you can add it once for TCP and then again for UDP. Then local IP, we need to find out what the IP address of our hosting computer is. So I'll start R, CMD, hit enter, and I'll type in IP config. Then we'll go ahead and look for how we're connected to the internet, which currently for me is ethernet. Then under IPv4 address, we'll make sure to look at what this is here. So 192.168.1.20, of course, yours might be different. So depending on what it's asking for, you may just have to type in the last few digits. Otherwise, you may have to type in the entire thing, 192.168.1.20. And then we'll go ahead and hit Add New. And that's about it. We've now successfully port forwarded it to our computer. If we'd like people to join it from other networks, such as our friends, all we need to do is simply Google what is my IP copy what it says and send it across to them. Of course, I won't be demonstrating that last step as I need to keep my IP address private. I'll close out of Chrome and from here we can simply run .bat once again and wait for the server to start up entirely. While that's starting up, I'll tab back into Minecraft and I'll simply rejoin my server once it's finished preparing the spawn area and starting up. And there we have it, we're back. And that's it, that's how to set up your own Minecraft server for the 1.16 snapshot. As you can see, we have some of the new blocks over here. However, I'll just go ahead and create a portal real quick. And there we have it. As you can see, we're inside of the new nether with the new biomes and everything else included with it, which is really cool. So I hope you enjoy playing the new nether update with your friends. This is of course the snapshot and not the full release of 1.16. That's currently not available. If you'd like to know how to do it for the full release of 1.16, then make sure to check back on my channel once it's finished releasing because I will have a video on that then. Of course, when it comes to setting up mods, etc, etc, when Craft Bucket and the rest update for 1.16, I'll make sure to make a video on those as well in case you're interested in that. However, I'm pretty sure I'll only do that for the full release when it eventually comes out. 
Anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.